Hello and welcome. I'm Raymond Modulin, a.k.a. The Real Estate Monkey, and welcome to this week's Real Estate with Raymond. On this episode, we're going to be talking about what adds value to your home. All right, I'm going to give everybody a couple minutes to uh, log in here so we can have a good conversation. Um, let me preface this by saying I am not an appraiser, I'm not a licensed appraiser. I am a licensed real estate broker, so hopefully uh, I can help uh, answer this question. I want to say hello to Mary Beth. Mary Beth, thanks for coming. She always joins in. Um, I want to take a quick minute while we're waiting some people to come in here. If you've got questions today, feel free to type them down there and uh, that'll let you know. So we're going to talk about what adds value to a home. I want to thank Spencer Grosvenor for actually suggesting this uh, thread today. And Spencer actually was a producer for me on my last uh, radio show. So, Spencer, this is your question. Thank you very much. You'll be getting some great swag in the mail. Uh, we're going to be talking about what adds what adds value. I hope I think I just may have got disconnected. I don't know. Um, so, <clears throat> first thing I want to do is throw in a obligatory uh, ad. Um, if you guys know that I create courses online, do a lot of uh, online courses, I'm going to have a webinar in October about creating courses online. If you want to know more, go to create, creatingcoursesonline.com and sign up for that webinar. Or Actually, it's a live seminar. But today we're going to be talking about what adds value. Spencer sent me an email and said, did creating a man cave add value to his home? And the short answer for that is, yes, it does, Spencer, okay? So let's talk about what we can do to add value to our home. Now, there are a lot of people out there that don't really understand how an appraisal works, all right? So if there are any appraisers out there, feel free to chime in and help me understand because I know, well, at least I'm pretty sure that this is how it works, okay? There are certain things that, that appraisers look for that determine your ba uh, value. Beds, baths, square footage, you know, two-story basements, finished basements, things like that. There are things that do not add value that people erroneously think they do. Like, oh, I put stainless steel appliances in or I sent um, ceramic backsplash. All of those things are really cool but they don't take your $150,000 house and all of a sudden make it a $170,000 house, okay? Why? Because those are things that we don't use as comping mechanisms, all right? So for instance, if you have a three-bedroom house, two-bath with a three-bedroom house, two-bath, virtually they are equal in value. Now, what happens, though, is someone goes into one of their houses and they say, oh, I'm going to add ceramic backsplash and a full body shower and ceramic flooring, okay? Now, what happened here is it doesn't make your house worth more, but it makes it the best $150,000 house out there. So theoretically, when people go shopping and they see, well, here's a $150,000 house I can get that's got all of these amenities, and here's another one that doesn't, I'm going to buy the better home, all right? So for you people out there that are looking to buy or you agents out there that are trying to uh, have a value discussion with your uh, client, make sure they understand that there are certain things that will not um, back up from the camera, uh, back up from the camera. Well, my arms are only so damn long, Joe. <laughs> All right. It looks like I got the DTs too when I'm shaking. <laughs> um, but when you add, like when you finish a basement, now you've got finished basement that is definitely better than unfinished basement. That can add value, all right? But taking your three-bedroom home and putting brand new carpet in it, well, that's great, or repainting it a completely neutral color is not going to change the value of the home at all, all right? It's going to make it the best home in that price range, okay? So there are many things that you can do, and most notably, if you're an investor out there, one of the things I talk about all the time is adding a bedroom or adding a bath, you know, expanding the living room, 
adding a new garage, things like that will actually change the, the value of the home. Not just, oh, I'm going to repaint, put new carpet in, and now I want to jack the price up 10 or 20 grand. All right. Those typically are not going to add value. So let's see here. Spencer says, out style the same value home makes sense. That's exactly correct, Spencer. That's what you're trying to do. If you want to sell your home fast, um, then you can make new, better stuff in that home, but it doesn't change the value. Adding a deck is always a good idea. Um, it might change the value a little bit. And let me back up by saying, you're not, there are some things that will add value, like if you do a completely renew kitchen um, out there. Uh, quick uh, historical lesson here. What two rooms are the best rooms to update? What two rooms? The bathroom, the master bathroom, and the kitchen. But most people or most pundits will only tell you that about 65 to 70 cents on the dollar is all you're going to get in value. And at some point, you can actually go backwards if you add too much. All right. So adding a deck may add a couple grand to the value of your house, but you're definitely not going to add value like you would if you were adding another bathroom or another story or finishing out the basement. All of those things take it from a three bedroom, two bath house. So now you got a three bedroom, three bath house. Now there's where your value coming in. All right. So just adding some things that don't really change the value is not going to help you. It'll make you the best house in this neighborhood. And typically what happens is you go in and you talk to somebody and they're like, oh, I want to list my house and I've got the prettiest house in the neighborhood. Well, honestly, I'll tell you right now, the worst house to sell or the hardest house to sell is the best one in the neighborhood. Because if they're that close or they're the best one and they truly are, there are a lot of people's mindset that will say, well, for another 10 grand, I can move into the bigger neighborhood and maybe not have the best house, but I'm in a bigger neighborhood. All right. The two houses that are hardest to sell are the best house and the worst house. And typically the worst house will sell before the best house because there are people that are going to say, well, I'll go in, buy it low, add something to it and bring the value up. Okay. So what you want to do to add value is change the configuration is the most important thing. Like I said, uh, finish the basement out. Add another bath, add another bedroom, add a second story. All of these things will literally change the value of your home. Not necessarily just new carpet, repaint. We call that putting lipstick on a pig. You know, you're still owning the same pig. It's just now the prettiest pig at the state fair. And typically those are the ones that go first, okay? So if you're selling a house and you're looking for ways to sell your pig, the best idea first is to make it the best pig. Clutter it, do the landscaping, do all of that. If you're trying to get more value out of it, then you're going to have to change the configuration, all right? Now, Spencer out there is being very vocal, and he's got the right idea. And I'm assuming Spencer's trying to finish out his uh, man cave in the basement. Um, I just recently did that in my house. For those of you that may know who I am, I occasionally uh, will tend to have a cigar, and I have added a cigar room in the basement of my house. It has its own ventilation system, built-in humidor, all of that stuff. That has actually now added more living square footage to our unfinished basement, so the value of the house goes up, all right? So anything that you can do that will change the configuration is your best bet to get more value, all right? If there's any appraisers out there that have some idea, leave me a message right down here or comment so everybody else can see that. Or if I'm completely wrong, which I doubt it, feel free to say that as well, um, all right? So what you're looking for to add value to your home is to change the configuration. Um, okay, Johnny Humphrey says, what about adding a closet to a mandate size office space to create an extra bedroom? Sure, there are certain uh, requirements for it to be considered a bedroom. Um, and FHA has its own thing about a closet, also has to have an escape 
uh, route, like a window, and the window has to be so many inches above the floor for it to count. So, you know, you can't just go into your big walk-in closet and go, hey, it's another bedroom, all right? So you might want to check with that to see. And yeah, uh, dual purpose is great because there are plenty of, like in our house, we've got a three-bedroom house, but typically we only use one as a bedroom. One is my office, one is my wife's sewing room, but they are traditionally bedrooms. They have closets, they have windows. So when we sell, we're going to sell obviously as a three-bedroom and not as a one-bedroom with an office because that makes more sense. Sarah, a uh, home that has all those extras does sell for more than a home that doesn't. So technically it has more value. Um, Sarah, I can agree with you. I don't know if it's how much more value you have. What ends up happening is it sells the fastest, maybe for more value if you get into a bidding war like right now. But typically new paint, new carpet and stuff like that doesn't really add value. New kitchens can add value, but like I said once before, only so much. At some point, you get, you know, the, uh, what is it, the principle of diminishing return, where if you add so much, it actually starts detracting from it. Uh, true story, I remember a lady, and people have heard this story before, that had uh, 72 lawn ornaments in the front yard. Uh, she had everything. She had the gazing ball. She had the little mushrooms and all of that. We had an agent go look at it. And I called him the next day and said, hey, you know, I'm ready for the offer. And his quote to me literally was, well, we took a look at the front yard, guessed what the inside looked like and didn't go in. So sometimes too much can actually be detrimental. So Sarah, you're right. If you make it the best house by adding some stuff, you may be able to bump the value up. But typically it's not going to jump like it would if you added more configuration. All right. Um, if you have any more questions or comments, I definitely want to thank Johnny and Sarah for both weighing in on that. Uh, and maybe Sarah is, is technically correct that it might sell for a couple grand more, but it's not going to do a whole bunch to it. All right. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. I'm at Raymond at real estate. Well, that was interesting. Um, so what do I think about pools? Well, Brianna, one of the things I will tell you is I was a level one tax assessor at one time. There is no place on the tax form for an increase in valuation for an above ground pool. Above ground pools do nothing but detract from the value. In ground pools, once again, to me, it's one of those attributes. Uh, as a family man that had six kids growing up, every house that we looked at with a pool was an automatic out for us because we did not want to take the risk of a situation. And one of the major ways to stop risk is to completely avoid it. So at best, I think a pool is either negative or really positive. And what I mean by that is somebody that's looking to buy a house with a pool will pay for the pool. Somebody like me that was not interested in a pool at all actually cost the sale on a couple different properties. We loved the house. We loved the neighborhood. Didn't like the fact it had a pool. It immediately got cut out. So pools are a funny thing. Um, <clears throat> but I, I will tell you that an above ground pool never adds value. Always detracts. All right. Um, I think that's going to be it for me. If you have any more questions, feel free to leave them. I'll try and answer them while I'm off the air. And send me an email to Raymond at MyRealU.com if you got any questions. And if I use your question, I'm going to send you a bunch of swag. This week, I want to thank Spencer. Spencer, that was Spencer's question about how to add value. If you've got other questions, send me an email. If I use it, I'll send you some swag, all right? I'll talk to you later. Peace out. Bye.